about motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? <laughs> mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, parenting is full of challenges. But one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, Tara Clark. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe. Today, we're going to be talking about time management and productivity for moms. I am joined by Marissa Lonick. She is a keynote speaker, life and business coach, three-time author, top-rated podcast host, and founder of Mama Work It. After spending nearly 15 years in corporate leadership positions, Marissa shifted gears to become a full-time momager and biz momager. Through her books, courses, and coaching programs, Marissa helps busy moms juggling mom life, work life, wife life, fill in the blank life. Her time management and goal achievement strategies have helped the most overwhelmed mamas turn their dreams into reality, even when they thought they had no time to make any of that happen. Marissa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me and for that lovely intro. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm so excited that you're here today. So as I mentioned, Marissa, you are an accomplished author and a business owner. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I am a mama of four kids, four boys, ages nine, nine, five, and three. I spent, like you said, a lot of my career in the traditional working mom sense. I was in the corporate world doing that, you know, commute during the nine to five hours, all those things. I did that while being a mom, while adding to my family, while the postpartum phase, like maternity leave, all of that stuff. So I know firsthand all of those experiences, like the heartache you feel of going back to work, no matter what baby it is, number one, number two, number four. (laughs) So I get it. I know what it's like to be juggling the side hustle, main hustle. I started my business three years before I decided to fully step into it and leave the corporate world. So I totally get that. And now, like you said, I work with women, mostly with moms, with working parents on the juggle and just really being able to get some, obviously, some practical hacks to make this thing work, this impossible task, what it feels like some days work, but also a lot of the internal shifts and mindset hacks and things like just our relationship with time and all of those important things that need to happen too. So we're not plagued with mom guilt and all the things that really sabotage all our good efforts. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned relationship with time and I think that's an interesting concept. So you're a busy mom. I'm a busy mom. The listeners right now are busy moms. Talk to me about what that means, our relationship with time and and why is that a critical piece of time management? It's such a critical piece of time management. And so I think most of us tend to have this love-hate relationship when it comes to time. Like we sort of treat time more like a frenemy and not like a friend, right? She feels really flaky. Like she's never there when we need her. There's never enough of her, right? She like swings in and leaves too quickly when we're having fun or you know she sticks around too long and overstays her welcome when we're in a situation we wish was over like 5 minutes ago or 5 hours ago right so we have this really interesting typical like love hate bond with time and we kind of look to her as somebody who's really like not there for us and irresponsible and and what happens is then we fall into this mindset of like time is scarce And we fall into that scarcity mindset when it comes to time. You've probably heard of this when it comes to like money and abundance, right? Like a lot of people have scarcity when they think about their business, when they think about their finances. You are probably also experiencing this when it comes to your time because it's like the default thing that we all do, right? We, We say, I don't have time. We say no to opportunities because we feel too busy. We constantly feel like we're on the go, rushing, doing all the things. But then at the end of the day, we feel defeated that we didn't actually do the things we wanted to do. So we have to shift that. We have to turn that around. We have to pretty much make time our BFF 
like our friend, right? And how do we do that is we shift from within. We start thinking about time more abundantly. We start realizing that saying things, affirmations like, I'll always have time for what matters to me. Like there's plenty of time for what I need to do, right? And with that, with that shift comes a change in our behavior, a change in sort of what we're prioritizing, how much we're prioritizing, what we're delegating out, where where we're setting boundaries. And so so many like magical things happen just from that one simple shift with our relationship. And if it's okay, I can teach you just a really simple hack in the word choices that you're using that can help you start on your way toward that like BFF bestie time relationship. Yeah, hack me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's okay. Do it. So I hear a lot and trust me when I say I have been guilty of this for many years in the past. I've I've shifted, but now like I hear this a lot where people will be like I don't have time. They say these words sort of ad nauseum. And what happens is when you speak these words aloud, when you think them, you believe them, right? They become your truth and the actions follow. So you say I don't have time, I don't know, fill in the blank to work out. Well, you don't end up working out because you truly believe that's not something you have time for. There's not enough time for that. And you don't end up exercising. And then you feel bad about yourself. And then maybe, you know, you're kind of unhappy with how you look or the postpartum baby pounds or just like, you know, your health in general. You're not feeling your best. And it's like this vicious cycle. So I'm going to challenge you. If you find yourself saying those words, I don't have time, I want you to flip the script, make a really simple shift. And instead of saying that, I want you to say, it's not a priority to me. And magical things are going to happen when you simply make this change. Now, you could feel one way or you could feel another way. And we'll exemplify this in both ways. But either way, in my opinion, is an absolute win. So let's take the exercise example because I hear this one a lot. I feel like especially moms, we're running around all the time. We don't feel like we can go to that spin class or do that run or whatever it is that we like to do for exercise, right? I don't have time to work out versus working out isn't a priority to me. Now, when you speak it this way, like I said, you're going to feel one of two ways. One way you're going to feel is you're going to feel like a weight lifted off your shoulders. You're going to be like, well damn, it's not. (laughs) It's just not a priority. (laughs) And you know what? That's okay. I'm going to stop shooting all over myself about Mm -hmm. this. I'm going to stop feeling guilty. I'm going to stop taking up precious mental load space because we know the mental load is heavy and it's real. And I'm going to just move on with my life a little bit. And you know what? It doesn't have to be forever. Maybe it's just this season. Maybe your baby's not sleeping through the night. Maybe your kid is sick. Maybe you're going through a really challenging time in your work. And that's okay. And you know what? Just take that guilt off your shoulders. It's not a priority right now. And that's fine. And you move on. And to me, even though you didn't get the workout in, it's a win. It's a win in how you're feeling. Now, on the other side of that, if you say that out loud, working out isn't a priority to me, and you don't feel good about it, you actually feel like you're speaking something that isn't true, that's a lie, that feels really icky and misaligned, well, what's going to happen? Girlfriend, you're going to find a creative solution to make this a priority. Like It is inevitable when something is indeed a priority to you, you figure out how to make the time for it. So whether that means waking up sooner going to bed later, actually setting an alarm to get up from your work desk and do something, you know, like walking, you know, for five minutes at a time in between calls, like you will find a solution to your problem because when it's a priority, you make it happen. Mm -hmm. I love that perspective shift. And I also like that you're talking about exercise because that's the one thing for me that's really challenging because during my work day, I know that I could be or should be doing that. And then I talk myself out of it in as much as like, oh, but then I have to wash my hair and then I don't have time to dry my hair and then my hair is going to be wet. You know, like you tell yourself these stories of why you can't work out or because of all of those domino effect things afterwards. Tara, I just love that you said the hair example. Can I just say, because this has like been a struggle of mine in the past too. And one years ago, I don't know if it's still live on my site. If it is, I will certainly send you the link to put in the show notes. But years ago, I wrote a blog post, how to work out without sweating because your hair. <laughs> 
it is such a big part of it. It's such a big deal. (laughs) If I run on the treadmill, and I mean like really run on the treadmill, I'm going to get sweaty. And then, therefore, I need to take a shower and wash my hair. But I'm not always ready to deal with the after of washing my hair. Hair washing is not like it's not a short process for many. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Like my yeah. husband is really good about working out. He makes working out a priority. He also can go take a five-minute shower, wash his body head to toe, and then just be ready to go about his day. And I'm not quite in the same space as that. Yeah. Well, if it is a priority, you will find a creative solution. Yes, I <laughs> and if will. It's not, and if the hair is a priority, hey, it's okay. Your hair can be a priority sometimes. That's fine. Yes. I I really love that perspective shift because speaking selfishly, I think that's what I need to to hear for myself to go on the treadmill and say, like, forget about the hair. Just make it a priority and walk for, like you said, five minutes in between calls or whatever it is. We actually have a, I don't know how I would call it, like a laptop holder on my treadmill so that I can Oh, either, Tara. Wh- yes. there, I have no excuse not to work out. That's my pro. I told you. It's not my pro. It's my- Get a little fan so your hair yes. doesn't get as sweaty. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I can walk and I can, you know, watch videos or do work. And, and that's why we got that, so that I can be better about it and make it a priority and stop feeding myself a narrative about my hair. Yeah. The struggle is real, but you can totally make it happen. You can even do it without messing up your hair, I bet. (laughs) And I'm going to. That's going to be my New Year's intention, to be better about working out. And I actually, I used to do this years ago. I used to do the bar method, which is like a bar exercise. And I wouldn't even have to shower after that because I wasn't working so hard that it, it wrecked my hair. So maybe I need to go back to that so that I could not have to wash my hair as frequently as I do if I'm running on the treadmill. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, new year, new intentions. This episode is brought to you by Modern Mom Style Box. Upgrade your wardrobe and enjoy unlimited styles for just $60 a month. Modern Mom Style Box is the first rental clothing subscription designed exclusively for moms and moms to be. Get started today with a free trial. Use promo code PTO. Well, do you ever get like the most compliments on your hair when it's not the cleanest? Just yes. saying. Yes, that is absolutely true. That is, yeah, I have to keep that in mind. So, Marissa, what's your mantra when it comes to multitasking? Yes. I love that you asked me this. I feel like multitasking is a part of every mom's life. Do you feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how could how could we not? Yeah. And anytime I ask people this question, do you multitask? I get a very embarrassed yes, right? Like they raise their hand sort of halfway and they're like, yeah, but they're like almost really ashamed to say they do multitask because what you hear out there from a lot of experts and I'm a total like productivity nerd. I geek out on this. So like I follow a lot of these really successful, amazing people who teach me about all these great things. You hear a lot of people out there just saying black and white, don't multitask, right? Multitasking takes your focus away from what you're doing. It makes you make mistakes. Like it doesn't give you your best work. It's just, it's not a good solution. And trust me when I say I have the utmost respect for these individuals, for what they're teaching, what they're preaching, like what they're trying to help us out with. But also, like I'm a mom of four kids. I'm running a business. Like I keep it real and that's just not going to work for this season of my life. You know, I don't have like a full staff here in my house like doing all the things. I'm doing a lot of the things as I'm sure you are and a lot of listeners are. So my mantra, my sort of like philosophy when it comes to multitasking is this, you're going to want to write it down if you're listening. It's you multitask the mindless and you solo task the mindful. And what this means is it's not a black and white, don't multitask or do multitask. It's choose wisely what you decide to multitask. Because when we're trying to multitask everything or the wrong things, that's when we end up feeling that level of stress 
that feeling of like cloudiness, being frazzled, snapping, like doing all the things that we feel like we don't want to be doing, right? And where we feel like we're in a hundred places at once. And it's hard. Trust me. Like there's a lot to do. It feels like we have to multitask all the time. But trust me when I say, if you can, if you can sort of draw a line in the sand here, and we can kind of talk about what some examples would be in either part, but if you can draw a line in the sand and you can choose wisely and intentionally what you're multitasking and what you're solo tasking, what I like to call it, you will be a much happier like well-balanced human being. So when it comes to mindless things, I think house stuff a lot. I think like cleaning up the kitchen, folding laundry, you know, I think exercise, which sometimes can be multitask. Obviously, if you're like in a class, you can't really be doing that. But if you're on your treadmill or walking or running around your neighborhood, you could totally be listening to a podcast, an audio book, right? Even catching up if you're not totally out of breath with like a a friend or something. And I advise you too to choose something that really brings you some joy in those situations because typically these aren't your favorite things to do, right? Like, I don't know about you. I freaking hate folding laundry. Like I hate it. I just, I mean, I try so hard, get to fold laundry, get to fold laundry, gratitude, but like it is hard. It is hard with four kids to feel that gratitude of folding the laundry all the time. But what I'll do is I'll pair it with listening to a podcast, listening to an audiobook, like catching up with a girlfriend or like something that just brings me more joy. And then I actually sometimes look forward to that, you know? And I also, I, I don't have the excuse that I don't have time to do that because no, I'm actually pairing it with something else that I need to get done. So multitask the mindless. On the other side of that, solo task the mindful. These are the things you need like your full brain power for. You cannot do on autopilot. Like if you made a mistake, it would cost you time, money, embarrassment. Like it, you want to be present, right? So these are like creative work projects, even like email, right? You don't want to send the wrong email to the wrong person. Just be present. Don't try and do emails when you're doing other things. Playing with your kids, like really playing, not like half playing, like be present and really play. Like you want to be there. You want to be building that relationship with them. Dinner, dinner with your family. Stop checking your emails or your social during dinner. Like be fully present, have those conversations. Kids are watching our behavior. So That's my two cents. That's my mantra when it comes to multitasking. It's so eloquent, so beautifully said. It's one of those things where it's like you put the words to what it is that I do here each day, you know, my my day in and day out. You know, I work from my house and I will put in a load of laundry into my washer and then I'll go jump on a call with a client or I will, you know, throw something in the dryer and then record a podcast. Actually, that I don't do because the dryer makes noise. But <laughs> a little podcast trick there. So that's actually what so I'm not doing laundry today is my point there. But I understand and I relate to that so much and I bet there are so many other parents out there who are listening that say, "Yes, yes, that makes sense. I'm doing that too." So, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for putting words to it. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, the awareness too. Like sometimes it's nice to be aware that like, yeah, I'm doing it right. And sometimes it's like, okay, I could be doing that just a little bit differently and like it would make a world of a difference. So I love that it could have that sort of impact, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and when you were saying about really focusing, it reminds me of like creative flow, right? To get into a creative state. And And how do you get into a creative state? How do you get yourself flowing, if you will? I think it's really important to create time and space to just like let yourself be and think and like let that flow. You know, we have these really enormous long to-do lists daily, right? And it's really easy to just like as soon as the workday starts or as soon as we open our eyes or as soon as, you know, our feet hit the ground to just like go right on and start banging out the to-dos on the list. And what I've discovered is actually it's, you're way more efficient, you're way more productive if you create a little bit of time and space to just be. And what does that mean? You could fill that with whatever it means to you. Like it could be journaling, it could be, you know, taking a walk outside, 
gosh, it could be like a meditation or a breath work. Some of these things take five minutes. But I get my best ideas not when I'm sitting in front of my laptop, when I'm like out on a walk or a run, or when I'm like letting the idea, like just whatever's on my mind flow onto a a journal paper, or when I'm like doing a breathwork session, like that's when they come. It's when I'm creating that time and space, you know, and, and don't put the pressure on yourself to always come up with that, you know, in that moment, like when the download is supposed to hit you, it's going to hit you. Mm -hmm. It's so true. For me, it's always in the shower. That's my spot where I have so many ideas and then I can't write them down because I'm in the shower. Tara, it is so true. I've said this before. The shower is another good spot. I think it has something to do with the embodiment, like honestly, the hot water and all of that good stuff. But I got the idea for my first book, the title of my first book, In the Shower. And what did I do? As soon as I got out, I wrote it down because mom brain, you know, like you are scared you're going to lose it. (laughs) Yep. Always. That's exactly what it is. You need to keep like post-it notes maybe in the bathroom or something like that so you could always Do you have a down. shower door? Sometimes I'll like write them on the shower oh, door. That's a good – I do. I do. But it doesn't get enough condensation for me to write that in. But <laughs> Oh, you're not taking ridiculously steaming hot showers that like burn, burn, my burn skin. your yes, skin I like I do? <laughs> yes, I do. My husband like couldn't even remotely handle how hot I keep my shower. <laughs> yeah. I know Talk it's about terrible that for your fill skin. You with joy. I know it really is, and I actually have dry skin, especially in the winter time. So I really shouldn't be taking showers that hot. But you know, you have to do what makes you happy in life. Yes, just sl- slather on some like lotion, and you know, call it a day. Right, exactly, Marissa. What's your secret ingredient? You know, what makes you so successful in what you do with Mama Work It? Ooh, I don't know if I can answer that. I mean. I think self-awareness actually is a really, really important skill set no matter what you're doing in life. Like that to me is the secret sauce of what gets disregarded a lot or like not given enough attention in this world, you know, like the more you actually know who you are, how you communicate, what your personality is typically like, like where your strengths lie, like even your human design, your astrological background, like all of these elements that make up who you are, are just tools in your toolkit to be able to communicate more effectively, to like be able to know other people better, right? Read, read the room better, be able to make better like business decisions, decisions for your family, for your life. So many things come from that self-awareness. So I would say I've done and I continue to do a lot of work in that space because to me, it's like the hidden superpower that not a lot of people tap into, but we all have the ability to easily do. And in a lot of my programs and even my books, like I developed like even quizzes and things just to help people figure that out about themselves. Like we have a communication quiz, we have a worthiness quiz, like things that just really help you better understand yourself and where you may want to be more focused on developing further or just the awareness, the simple awareness to know like how you may or may not react to things as they come. Yeah, that's so important. I think that doesn't nearly get spoken about nearly as enough as it should. Yeah, agree. I mean, why are they not teaching like a course on this in college, you know? Yeah. Yeah, even get them younger, maybe middle school, high school. Try to get those kids probably early. the better time to do it, absolutely, right? Those are some hard years. Yeah, those are challenging years. They they really are. So, Marissa, what is your biggest takeaway for my listeners? So, you know, I feel like you and I being in this mom world in business and life and our listeners probably also, well, your listeners, sorry, probably also like being sort of like berated with the mom content on social media a lot. Like, okay, so I feel like the term self-care gets thrown around a lot. And sometimes I even like kind of roll my eyes when I talk about it because I'm like, oh no, another another self-care thing here. But I want to tap into it just for a quick moment because I do think it is like a really crucial and important thing. Like it's out there for a reason, okay? But I also think it doesn't need to necessarily like fit the mold or the box of what when you close your eyes, you imagined, you imagine what self-care is. So like 
typically if I ask this question to an audience or a client, like the first things that I hear are like the typical things you think of, right? Like Manny Petty, massage, luxury vacation, like spa day, like all the things that we're pretty much not doing regularly, you know, and we we can't sustain on a regular basis. Like maybe you're someone who like consistently gets your nails done. I can't commit. I just can't do it. But like a lot of people do and that's great, you know, but like I'm not taking a luxury vacation as often as I probably should, right? I'm not hitting the spa as often as I'd love to be just because it just doesn't fit with my life right now. You know, I would love for one day it it would, but right now it just doesn't. So I want you to think about self-care from a really broader perspective because the definition and the purpose of this is to replenish you, to like fill you back up so you're able to show up as the best version of yourself, not just for you, but for everyone for your kids, for your spouse or partner, for your work, like in all elements of your life. And so it is a necessity and it has to be done proactively on a daily basis, but it could mean so many things, right? It could mean five minutes of sipping your favorite latte uninterrupted. It could mean like reorganizing your closet or your pantry, you know, like it could mean taking a walk outside pushing a stroller or not pushing a stroller, you know, like there's so many things you could fill in the blank with this. And as long as you're proactively doing what fills you in that moment on that day on a regular basis, not just when like you are, your wound is gushing blood and like you need to just put a bandaid on it to like get through the rest of the day, you are going to be in a much better place to not just survive the season of motherhood you're in, but to thrive in it. So beautifully said. I'm glad that we tackled that because going back to time management, so many times people are like, oh, but I don't have any time for self-care. I don't have any time to take that extra hot shower. So what do you say to those people who are saying that? Well, that's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) I say, I say, I call BS on that. You're not making it a priority and that's the bottom line, you know, and, and maybe your grandiose ideas of self-care need to kind of come down to a more realistic expectation right now. So that's number one. And number two, yes, you do. You have time to spend five extra minutes in the shower. You know, take your shower at a different time of day when you don't have kids banging on the door, you know, asking for something. Yes, you do. You have time to, you know, exercise, wake up a little earlier or, you know, don't pick up your phone as soon as your kid takes a nap and get on your treadmill first. You know, like these are small little shifts you could be making. And like, I know you and I share, we're both from New York and like, sometimes I come across a little too abrupt and direct maybe because of that. But like, this is what it is, you guys. Like we get to make these choices every single day. Some people may feel like that's a slap in the face and like not like that I'm saying that. And others are going to feel empowered and feel like, well, yeah, it is. And I get to make that decision. And that's how I want you to feel. I want you to feel empowered to be able to make those choices, take ownership if you're not making the choice you want to make and change it because it's literally that simple. Everything is a choice and we can change it. Mm, I love that. That's a great note to end on. Marissa Lonick, tell everyone where we could find you. Yes. So the best place to find me is my website. It is www.mamaworkit.com and that's spelled M-A-M-A. Also on Instagram, Facebook at the handle Let Mama Work It. And if you would love to subscribe. We send a free weekly newsletter, time management and productivity tips for moms. We've got the podcast, the blog, lots of free resources. So I would love to connect with you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest and tackling another modern mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks.